Today, we're going to be riding on one of Europe's little-known high-speed trains, the Intercity Slovenia Pendolino. On the journey, I'll be showing you what makes this train so special, from the weird interior design choices to the classic and stylish onboard bar. And all this as we travel on one of Europe's secret scenic railways, along the stunning Sava Gorge. So join me as I cross this small European country from the comfort of Slovenia's fastest express train. Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm just outside of Ljubljana station in Slovenia and I'm going to be catching the country's premier rail service, the Intercity Slovenia Tilting Pendolino train. I'll be travelling in second class for this journey over to Maribor, so let's go. Hello from the classic station of Ljubljana, here in Slovenia's capital city. This station first opened when the city was part of the Austrian Empire, one year before any railways had even arrived in the city. In 1849, the Austrian Empire's line from Vienna to Trieste finally reached the city, giving it a connection to the Empire's capital. Nowadays, the station is well connected, with the city's main bus station being located just outside, hosting many local buses as well as long-distance coaches. Now let's head inside this historic station building and have a look around. The station's main entrance is clearly designed to impress, with an ornate design featuring brown marble walls and a checkered floor. To the left is the large ticket office, continuing the impressive design, even featuring stained glass windows to match Slovenia's flag colours. Here you can buy both domestic and international tickets, but I bought mine online. More details on the price later on. The other side of the hall features McDonald's, perhaps a little bit less impressive than the rest of the station. Continuing into the station, we can find a small shop selling snacks and drinks, as well as a little cafe and tourist information desk. But let's head through to the platforms and find my train. Ljubljana is connected quite well with surrounding countries, seeing direct trains to Croatia, Austria, Switzerland, Italy, Hungary and even Germany. My train today is ICS 14, the 0815 service to Maribor, Slovenia's second largest city. We'll be departing from track 8 today, which is quite a long walk from here thanks to the somewhat unusual layout. There's even a map so you can find the right track. The first three tracks are reserved for local commuter trains, heading to towns towards the country's southwest. All other tracks can be reached via the underpass, which is located as far away from the station's main entrance as possible. All passenger trains in Slovenia are operated by Slovenske Železnice, the country's national operator. In recent years, they have bought a large amount of brand new trains, just like the Stadler Flirt unit shown here. But my train is one of these rather special Pendolino units. Just three of these three carriage units entered service in 2000, and as far as high-speed trains go, that is pretty short. The fleet is used on flagship Intercity Slovenia, or ICS, services, connecting Slovenia's two largest cities a few times a day. Now there are plenty of unusual things to show you on this train, but we'll get to that later on, as it's soon time for departure. I'll be travelling in carriage 3 today, at the front of the train. Stepping into this train is like a blast from the past, with the interior design feeling very early 2000s. Slovenske Železnice's website claims that you need a seat reservation to travel on this train. However, I wasn't given one when I bought a ticket, so I just decided to sit here in seat 11 and hope nobody comes and tells me off. Today's route will see us heading east, winding along the stunning Sava Gorge before speeding up for the final run into Maribor. Journey time is scheduled to be 1 hour and 50 minutes, covering 155 kilometers or about 97 miles. We depart on time at 08.15, beginning our ride across Slovenia. As we pull out, the overnight train from Stuttgart and Zurich arrives, due to continue for Zagreb in Croatia. And parked here is one of the other two Pendolinos, sat around waiting for its next duty. On the way out of the city, look out for the country's last steam engine, still in use at the power station. Anyway, time to have a look around this train's interior. 
Seating here in second class is in a 2 plus 2 layout, though single seats can be found at the end of each carriage. The seats themselves are extremely comfortable, with a good amount of padding and flawless ergonomic design. There's also a large head cushion which can be adjusted like this. Though I really don't know what they were thinking with this seat fabric, a mix of green, blue and orange really looks grotesque, a bit like mouldy bread. Each seat has folding armrests, also topped with this vile colour scheme. Beside the seat cushion, you'll find a lever for the seat's minimal recline, but it's still nice to have. The legroom available here is great, and there's more than enough room for the sub two hour journeys. There's also a folding footrest on the seat in front. And just above this, a small storage pocket. The seat back table is a little bit unusual, in that it's held up by this elastic strap for some reason. Once down, it provides a decently sized table for working, and also features a groove for holding a drink. But as a word of warning, some of these seats were in really poor condition, so make sure you don't hurt yourself. Back outside, we're making some good progress. This is the Ljubljanica River, a tributary of the Sava that passes through Ljubljana. We follow this river for a few short minutes before it merges with the Sava, which will carry on all the way to Belgrade in Serbia. The landscape begins to get a bit more exciting, with the flatlands beside the tracks slowly turning into mountains. We are now in the Sava Gorge, the railway closely skirting the banks of the river. This is a beautiful stretch of railway, and I only wish that the weather was better so I could experience it fully, like in this photo. The river here is straddled by two transport corridors, the railway here on its left bank and the main road to Zidani Most on the right side. This is Turbovlje, one of many stations we pass through en route. But it's actually Slovenia's 11th largest town, the town centre being located about 2 kilometres away. Slovenia is the third most forested country in the European Union, with 61% of its land area being covered by forest. And looking at scenes like this, you certainly begin to notice that fact too. After nearly an hour, we're on the approach to our first station. This is Zidani Most, a very important junction on the Slovenian rail network. Here, the line from Ljubljana and by extension Trieste and Vilach diverges to form two major railway routes. Heading to the north is the route towards Maribor, just beyond which is Austria, while trains heading south follow the Sava River towards Dobova and the Croatian capital Zagreb. At this point, we're running about 15 minutes late, though I'm not entirely sure why. Zidani Most translates literally as Stone Bridge, being named after a nearby bridge dating back to 1224. However, this was destroyed just over 200 years later in territorial disputes between Emperor Frederick III and the Counts of Tselje. Time to have a look around the rest of this small Pendolino train. Through here is the onboard buffet counter, excitingly named the Pendolino Bar 007. This retro buffet really did look the part, and I certainly didn't expect it on such a short train, though I think calling it a proper dining car is a bit of a stretch. As I travelled on a Sunday, this buffet was unfortunately closed, though with high prices and a limited selection, I wasn't missing much. At the rear of the train is first class, with large leather seats in a spacious 2 plus 1 layout, each situated at a big folding table. There were also onboard radios fitted, but I can't imagine they've seen much use for a while. The train features three toilets, one in each carriage. This one was clean and kept in good condition throughout the journey. The soap dispenser was working fine, though the soap was gritty. The water was also working, and there was a very weak hand dryer too. By the way, this train has a strict prohibition on ice cream and roller skates, and I really don't know why. Has Slovenian Railways suffered from a roller skating problem in the past? 
If you know, please tell me in the comments. Back outside, we're slowing down to call at Celje. This is Slovenia's fourth largest city, best known for its incredible castle. As we leave Celje, it's time for the fastest section of today's journey. Whilst this train is technically capable of 200 km an hour, the tracks it operates on limit it to just 160 km an hour. But even this is only possible for a very small section of the route, so you'll soon be back down to a more pedestrian pace. Especially with all the construction work to modernise the route, let's hope that speeds up the journey time. But the biggest benefit of these ICS Pendolino trains has to be the ability to tilt around curves, allowing them to run faster than usual trains. These classic Pendolino trains can be found all over Europe. With the much longer ETR460 variant this train is based on operating in Italy. You can also find very similar designs running in Czechia and Finland, among other countries too. As this train is a premium service marketed at business travellers, you can of course find free Wi-Fi on board. This was easy to connect to, and actually offered fairly decent speeds for browsing the internet and messaging. However, I was quite surprised that the train doesn't have any power sockets, except for this one at the end of the carriage. Just beneath the windows, you can find a pair of buttons which control the automated window blind. What a cool feature! And up here on the ceiling, you can find an individual reading light. Between windows, you can find coat hooks. Luggage space can be found in the form of these overhead luggage racks, though there are also some luggage stacks found in the vestibules. Heavier items can be placed between seats. Our supposedly fast journey to Maribor is delayed multiple times by various engineering works, with many parts of the route operating at a massively reduced speed on single tracks. One recent beneficiary of this work is Pragersko station, which now features modern platforms with a roof and an accessible underpass. It's almost unrecognisable compared to what it used to look like. Pragersko has a population of just 1,100 people, with the ICS train stopping to allow connections to the larger towns of Potui and Murska Sobota. Now we are back up to full speed, it's time to talk about how much this journey cost. For a one-way ticket on the Intercity Slovenia, you can expect to pay €15.40. Euros. For a fast and comfortable train between Slovenia's two biggest cities, I think this is a pretty good deal. The last sight we see on the journey is this amazing crossing of the river Drava, just before the station of Maribor. This triple arched bridge is also a very popular railway photography spot. We eventually pull into Maribor around 23 minutes late, mostly due to construction works. Overall, I really enjoyed my ride on the Intercity Slovenia. Whilst the interior clearly hasn't been touched in well over 20 years, it's a comfortable and speedy way to get between Slovenia's key cities, and the retro interior honestly just adds to the charm. And best of all, despite the hefty delay, I still managed to make my connection. As always, let me know what you thought of the Slovenian Pendolino in the comments, and for a look at Romania's own high-speed train, then click up here now to watch my video on the Softrans Hyperion.